We're here at Pebble Beach Concours d'Elegance on the green lawns of the golf club and I've just come across this, one of my favourite Ferraris for all sorts of personal reasons. First time I ever went to Le Mans was in 1979 and this was one of the cars. It's very loosely based on the 512 Berlinetta Boxer. It's got the engine in the same place, it's got the same middle bit, but besides that, it is an out-and-out -out race car. Very, very rare to see one of those cars, and then you move on, and what's next? Another one! That's quite something to see, just two of these. Both of these are Le Mans cars, and very much of their time. People talk about the GTO. The GTO from 1962. This is the 288 GTO which was something which was built for the market generally. And then we come up to the 360 GT. Production car, of course, uh, but built by Ferrari or Ferrari's people for, uh, for a race car. And I think a car that was on so many boys' bedroom walls back in the times of the early 90s, this 1992 Ferrari F40. Something that's going to float my boat very much as a historic race car is this gorgeous Ferrari 250 Testarossa. We know that the Testarossa, Italian for red head Testarossa, and that, that was because the, the, the heads on the engine itself were painted red crackle finish. So Testarossa, the, uh, the beautiful car that we, we see here, re-upholstered now and, uh, and ready to rock, but a racing car in its day. And then we come, of course, to what many people would see as the ultimate Ferrari, the 250 GTO. Two of them on the lawn, side by side, here at Pebble Beach. It was introduced in 1962. Only ran, actually, for two years before they redid it and recreated the car with uh, a different body, the GTO 64. I think most people would say that the second body was not anywhere near as pretty as the first. This is perfection. This is everything that it should be. And to have two of them side by side is an absolute treat. We come over and look at some of the older cars here. Some of them are competition cars. All of them are competition cars in this row. And we have the 412S. You can see the evolution of the car coming on here. 1958, beginning to see that beginning of how the cars would have been. The fared in headrest behind. And then we come down here to the Ferrari 365 Daytona. It was never called the Daytona properly by the Ferrari factory. That was a, almost a nickname and they then adopted it after that. The 365 here, one of the very few cars that was actually built as a competition car. Big V12 in the front, a road, road developed kind of car, but very effective nonetheless. Beginning to see here the cam tail the, uh, the spoilers because cars were now going sufficiently fast that keeping them in one piece and on the road was important. Now this is a lovely but very important car because this is the 330 LM. It was an evolution of the 250 GTO which had come just before that and that we saw the 250 GTO being pretty successful but was beginning to run out of steam by 1963, a year after its, its introduction. This is a bigger car, as you can see, the 330LM, with the, uh, the famous North American Racing Team logo on the side, the Luigi Canetti car, and that this car ran at Le Mans again. With, you, can see the, you can see the heritage, you can see the parentage of this car quite easily, but it's not a GTO, it is a 330LM. 
looking through then the 250 GT Berlinetta here very much you can see designed as a as a road car uh, you can see the heritage there this this has been built in period as a race car but nonetheless beautifully done the interior just the layout the, the lines ready to ready to pounce and then we walk up through this glorious pebble beach lawn to this unusual unusual to see a grey ferrari uh, certainly in this period this is a 1956 car and this is the very early 250 gt so we saw just now the 250 gt berlinetta and this is kind of the the road going version of it it's obviously is raced now in period but that's uh, that's something you just want to do if you had this car isn't it that it's it looks so good it's got a roll cage in it now wouldn't have had back in the day but nonetheless it's uh, it's something quite quite special but talking of special talking of special ladies and gentlemen here we have one of my own personal favorites and that would be the F333 SP built in 1999 principally for the American market it's a V12 it's kind of a Formula One car with a body but it was built as a customer car and not very often did Ferrari create those sorts of cars this is something different 333 SP we've talked about the noise that that Formula One car would have made this is again one of those here one of these flat chat on the balcony on on the banking at Daytona and you know all about it 333 SP from 1999 